14, 14 and 3. If I say it wrong, it's my bad. 14 and 3. 14 and 3. First Corinthians 14 and 3. Fourteen and three, but he did prophesy, speaking unto men to edification, prophesy, uh, exhortation, and comfort. <coughs> Excuse me. When we prophesy, we speak unto men to edify, to build them up, to build them up, to build them up, to exhort. Exhort means to urge, to urge, to urge, to urge, and to comfort. Comfort is that once you know a truth, that it should comfort you, because the end of the truth is always that God is still standing. You may have to die, but God is still standing. Okay? There's no, no, nothing that, that you deal with that God allows to come to you that you're not able to go through. God is not unrighteous to allow you to go to anything that you can't handle. The reason we, we choose sin is because we check out. God, there's nothing that happened to you that, God, that you can go to God. I, I just couldn't help it, so I chose sin as a reliever. I chose rebellion as a, as a reliever. God will say, no, that ain't true. Because I am not unrighteous to allow you to go through anything that you cannot stand. I meant for you to die in the process somewhere. To die some more. Because I'm not unrighteous to put you through anything that you had to choose sin as a relief valve. And we've all got there. I, I had to go do that because I was under so much pressure. And God will say, no, no, I'm not. I'm not unrighteous. I always make a way of escape. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Okay. Praise him. Are you with me? All right. God bless you. I took you that far. I'm gonna, the Holy Ghost will take us the rest of the way. So I got my clock right there. You see that clock? Amen. And I found a clock back there Saturday over by the trash can somewhere. I, I'm not going to ask who brought it at this time, but I, I assume that they were either uh, putting it over there with the mindset that maybe the church could use it, or they were putting it over there because they were saying maybe if you don't use it, you can throw it away. But we'll go into that later. But it, it's just how God set up things, okay, because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer because the Bible says in the last days that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter, I mean, uh, yeah, let's go to Acts chapter 2, and I think verse 17. If not, we'll find it, or, and then we'll go, uh, we'll go to Joel, so y'all don't think that I'm leading you astray. Come on, get your Bibles, go with me, and uh, don't check out. If uh, You'll be glad you came. You, You'll, you'll learn something. Yeah, let's go to Acts 2 and 17. Okay. It says, it should come to pass in the last day. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh means you and me. Amen. Those of us who are not A to Z. And those of us who was A to Z, young men. Okay? This, this young man over here, this tall young man. I didn't know he was as tall as he was until he came over here. He's taller than I am. Could you believe that? He's taller than me. <laughs> You know, I'm tall. He is taller than me. He's still right here. It says, it should come to pass in the last day, says God. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons, that means Marcus' son, shall, and daughter. And your sons and your daughters shall do what? Prophesy. Prophesy. I just read the scripture. If a lion roars, people are going to be afraid. If uh, the Lord speaks, you're going to prophesy. So all we need to do, Lawrence, is, is, is hear the Lord speak. Amen. So it says your sons and your daughters. It don't say whether they're black. It don't say whether they went to Bible college. It don't say whether they was the deacon. It says your sons and daughters should prophesy. And young men. Now, I'm, I'm young in, in some ways, but he's young for sure. But young men shall see visions. So when I was a younger man, I saw visions. And then it says, your old man. So I fit that bill too. Shall dream, dream. So either way it go, I fit the bill. And what made me fit the bill is that he poured out his spirit on me. Amen. That's it. it. It wasn't that I was any special dude, but he poured his spirit out on me. So when he poured out his spirit, we can backtrack. It could come to pass in the last day, says God poured out my spirit, bone flesh, flesh, sons and daughters should prophesy. So I wrote my prophecies down. 
I told people, but I wrote them down, and I kept them. And many of them didn't come to pass. So you were young now, and you, you were young and gotten older. So that's the qualifications. Okay, and it's in Joel. You don't have to go there, too. So it was in Joel. It was fulfilled uh, again in Acts chapter 2. That's 2,000 years ago that was spoken. So we are in time. Okay, so that qualifies me to be able to share this with you. And so that's, that's what I want to do because uh, that's why I got my clock there. So here we go. Just stay with me. I'm, I'm, I'm running real fast. This is always tough for me because. So March 11, 1 a.m. This is to those of you. And I know I'm not the only one who may be viewing the Lord speaks to you. But I challenge all of you that when the Lord speaks to you, write it down. Okay, because when I did this, I, never, I didn't know I'd be alive. Uh, now, March 11, I was alive here. It just, just happened. But on some of these, I'm going to read to you a long time ago. I didn't know I'd be alive today to share this. So all I want you to do is to receive it the best you can. And uh, let's get ready. So March 11, which was uh, just uh, Tuesday night, 1 a.m., 2022, I'm going to read it to you. I wrote, I could not sleep, but I was taken in the spirit into heaven. Like a rocket, I launched into orbit. I knew it was the spirit, but I was afraid and began to pray for mercy just in case this was my time of death. So what happened was I was visited by the Holy Ghost and taken up. And I was taken up so fast and I, and under the Spirit's control. That I didn't know whether I was dying going home, but I knew I had no control. So you see, I think I have a little insight as to what happens when we die. You know, the Spirit come get you and you go. Uh, people might be hollering and crying around you, but he takes you out. And he got so much control over you that you can't do nothing. I've been, I've been there many times. But I was conscious of the fact the Spirit had control of me. I saw the throne of God. I saw a clock. And I saw the words, the book of Revelation. I heard the words repeated several times. Just believe. Have faith. Just believe. Have faith. Just believe. Have faith. Then I was in the dominion where angels could be seen. I returned to a very large, very large building with mysterious moving curtains, and it was earth. The atmosphere and season in heavenly places is shifting to complete revelation. The earth is getting ready to go through curtain changes that will be both mysterious and fearful, unsettling. People will feel off-centered, out of balance, and struggle to keep footing because of large Curtain walls or walls of curtains, nations and cultures, countries, and shifting. It will affect everyone. So here's what I saw. I saw a clock like that, a Gotham-looking clock, but instead of the numbers, there was the word revelation around it. And so that was Tuesday. But yesterday when I came in here, I seen this old clock laying up in there. I'm like, oh, God, he always does something strange to confirm something. So I got the clock. I ran to Hobby Lobby. I, I colored the numbers to make it look like I saw in my vision. So that's what you see. Uh, but that's what I saw. I saw a clock. And instead of the numbers, it was the word, the book of Revelation that was written in that place. But when what, what I saw after seeing the throne and seeing the angels that the Lord, and I asked him, he said that we are in the time to fulfill this, and the curtains that was from in a, in a large place from top to bottom, it was like being in a car wash, and you know how those, 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 those cloths just lay on your car and they wash your windows? These curtains were going back and forth. It was, it was like in this room there would have been 50 of them, a layer here, a layer here, a layer here, but each one was going different. And as you walk through them, this layer might be going this way. If you move three feet this way, that layer be going that way. If you move this way, this layer be moving that way. And I said, what is this? He says, the, the earth 
is getting ready to change in the earth. Heaven was standing there, the revelation of Jesus Christ, ready to reveal what's in the book. The end time, ready to bring it to pass. But in the earth, the earth is shifting. Unstability, instability. Things are going to change. Everything that can be shaken in the earth is getting ready to be shook. From your personal life to, na to, to nations, to cultures, black lives, white lives, just anything, everything is getting ready to be shook in the earth. It is going to be shook because the Bible says so. The revelation of Jesus Christ. He is about to come. And so the hands on the clock were about straight up. It's the time of the end. And that's what I saw. So when the, the just have faith, just have faith has to do with trying to talk to this generation about the Lord coming. Because what happens is you say, Lord, ain't nobody going to believe. You know, you get to thinking that we're excited. No one wants to believe. No one wants to put Spread the word that Jesus is coming. Everybody want to talk about how good God is. And I know yeah, I'm going to be all right. You know, a selfish declaration. I'm going to be all right. You know, but no one wants to get, get uh, not nervous about it, but fix up their life. You know, uh, it, it's too, too much to, to say. But there's a certain frustration that comes with having prophetic revelation. It's, it's not that you've put yourself on a pedal, pedestal, oh, look at me, I know something. There's a weariness that comes with it. And that's why he was saying, have faith, just believe, just believe. So there's somebody maybe watching. When people write in your miss, I don't want to hear this because I got stuff in sin that I'm still wanting to do. That's frustrating. That's what Jonah dealt with. He's like, Lord. Why do I go and tell these people that when, number one, you're going to forgive them anyway? Number two, uh, a lot of times what a prophetic ministry does say, they ain't going to hear you. But what it is, God holds you accountable Amen. to be faithful Amen. because you are his messenger. Not just me, you, but you, you, Amen. because it ain't about you judging what they'll do. You be faithful. Amen. So you see, he was telling me, just do what I told you to do. Amen. See, So when I do it, I'm like any other person. I want to see folks shout, turn flips. Come on. Amen. Church like it was. Amen. Folk fall out. <laughs> you do too. Who wants to preach a sermon? Everybody sit there and. You won't focus like, yeah, you don't see him nodding, yeah. right. half sleep. <laughs> Dang, man, how long he going to be? Because this falls under prophetic mm -hmm. and teaching, Amen. not pastoral. See? So that, that's why the clock is there, because the Lord is saying, we have, we, we're, we've come to that time, okay? So whether you're in the black church, the white church, the gray church, the green church, church ain't. And it ain't just for me. You need to know it. Amen. I had a vision some years ago, and Mario had the same vision uh, the same night of some stuff happening right here in America. Same thing. I got scared. When he had it, I mean, it was scary when, I, scary when I had it, but when he had it too, I'm like, oh, my God. I thought it was going to happen quicker. It ain't happened yet. Yeah. But he had the same deal, I, and I may get to it or not. But, okay, so that, that's all. That, that's, that's what I wanted to share with you. Okay, so y'all y'all going to indulge me for a minute then. <laughs> now that I got you 10. We're going to get to a few scriptures here in a minute. So here, so with what's going on in the world now, some of the things that the Lord showed me, they make sense now. December 1st, 2020, I was carried away in the spirit. I was, it was like a capsule. 
I was riding in the caps of some sort at an incredible speed, and I was being transported, and I arrived into a city with tall buildings, coliseum, many people. Uh, then something strange happened. When I arrived to the destination, it was a major urban city. I saw hundreds and hundreds of people walking like zombies, both men and women, also children, all with closed eyes, barely speaking. In fact, I heard nearly no words at all. They were all covered and being covered in yellow puke. Puke green, almost army green, but mostly yellow rain. The raindrops were yellow to despicable green as it rained on everyone. What was outstanding was the amount of African Americans affected by this disaster. So the city area, so the city area I was transported to had many, many blacks. Then the structures began to collapse, and all the people began to scream loudly. The trees began to fall as the yellow rain continued. I saw no moving vehicles except one. A woman and passenger seemed to arrive at a home only to find it devastated. At 4.30 30 a.m., asking God for clarity, he said, the yellow rain, ugly green, covered everything, coral buildings, streets, hair, skin, feet, and all structures, and seemed to uh, stick to them. Uh, I'm trying to leave out some of the, the, the stuff that they're just words I'm saying. Uh, so, okay, February 24th, 2020, biological chemical weapons, something dropped from aircraft that had deadly gas or virus. The aircraft were from other nations. I saw the emblems. They were not American. April 16, 3.30 a.m., a vision of explosion gas oven in America. You, uh, you have gas on, then the flame, puff, boom, suddenly and frightening. Entire country affected. A man spoke in Russian or Slavic accent as he reported back to Russia. You know those Americans, they are funny and peculiar. The country turned from green to red in this, in this, in this vision. Okay, the, and, and I, I did the research that they were chemical agents. Now, the reason I bring this up now is because of all of the talk about uh, the attack for, on chemical weapons here lately. Now, when I wrote that in 2020, there wasn't no conversation about chemical weapons. Uh, so April, here it is, uh, April 16th, 2020, vision of gas oven exploding in America. It was if you were trying to light a gas oven, you have the fire on, you have the gas on, then all of a sudden, puff or boom, either one is sudden and frightening. In this case, the entire country was affected suddenly, then a voice spoke in what was known or perceived Russian. I wrote it twice because I was putting it on same page. Okay. All right. So I got one more. What I'm saying is the Lord, uh, he has been showing me that there's a possibility of something going. Uh, the church needs to be in an emergency prayer while we're watching what's going on in the world. No, really, we do. We do. I don't, I don't know how to call it. Because we just won't let nobody call, play chicken with us. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I thought I had this. Forgive me. Here it is right here. Got it. This is just a few of them. February 24th, 20. February 24th, 20. So that would have been last year on the 24th, 20. Fighter planes engaged overhead out of nowhere. First one on one, then two on one, then three on one. That means one on one dog fighting, then two on one, then three planes on one. I felt like it was an American aircraft. It appeared to be the latest American fighting jets. These jets are also flown by our allies, Israel, Canada, Australia, Saudi Arabia. It did not take long for the aircraft to be engaged by other foreign-made aircraft First one, then two. One aircraft reminded me of an orca whale or a killer shark in its triangular shape. This was either Chinese or Russian or Korean. The sky became filled with smoke bombs that seemed to cascade to the earth. They blanketed the earth before us. As these smoke bomb canisters fell to the earth, I saw no humans emerge. I didn't see tanks, cars, or landing flying machines, which I hesitated for a, a brick 
a brief moment to see before attempting to take cover. It was as if something was dropped from the aircraft that had deadly gas or virus contaminants. The blanketing was so thorough there was no escape. I had strong impressions of, of deadly gas. Uh, the vision ended with me trying to find shelter from the smoke gas of foreign matter, which fell in an orderly way, evenly spaced. It was a lot of it. It's biological weapons. Uh, the U.S. may be taken out with biological or chemical weapons. Uh, and then I got one other, April 16, 2020. One other, and I'm done with that. Oh, I already read that one. Uh, but anyway, anyway, I'm going to stop with that. Okay. What I, all I'm trying to say is that why would the Lord give it to me? Because he wants the least of us to know that we need to get our house in order and pray. Amen. Now, let me give you some scripture, and we're going to finish this and go home. He wants the least of us to know. He wants the least of us to know. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 25. He wants the least of us to know that right in front of us, the world is getting ready to change. That's what he showed me. The world is getting ready to change. Curtains. Remember, remember in the old movies, fellas? It's curtains. <laughs> you know, that was, I guess, in cartoons or somewhere in the old deal. You know, it's curtains. Curtains mean it's over. I hate to disappoint you because we have young people and those kinds of things. It's curtains. It's the come Lord Jesus moment. And there's, there's, there's plenty other in there from as far back as 1980. But I'm not going to read all that in this setting. And so to somebody... You don't have to believe in, in what I'm sharing with you, but it's right before your eyes. In every generation, listen to me, in every generation, every generation, the book of Revelation is being done. It is not just a one-time thing that it's way then in the future. In every generation, it's being done. Look at Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars upon the earth, distress of nation with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear. Men's heart failing them doesn't necessarily mean a heart, a heart attack, but when you hear stuff like this, it doesn't make you, it doesn't pump you up. I'm looking at the expressions on your face now. This, ain't, this is not your best self. I know you probably wish you hadn't come to church and heard this, but that ain't going to stop it from happening. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So that's what he was showing me. The powers of heaven are being shaken right now. And the powers in the earth are being shaken. Everything is being shaken. Then shall we see the Son of Man come in the cloud with power and great glory. That's what's getting ready to happen. Amen. Good thing to see your family. You got your family in church. It, it's a good thing to do. Get, you, get your family in church. Hey, man, I can't say that enough. Get, get, you, get your people in church if you can. Hey, there ain't nobody judging you. You ain't been, been to church in a while. Get over that. I don't go to church no more. Get over the fact that, you know, I don't, I don't believe in church. And you don't have to go to church. You don't. You, you ain't got to go to work. <laughs> Do you? There ain't nothing written. You got to go to work. It says you ought to. Because if a man don't work, he ought not eat. But there's nothing that says we're going to lock you up and throw you go to jail if you don't go to church. You ain't got to go to work. But you ought to. That's what the Bible says. So you ain't got to go to church, but you ought to. Amen. Amen. So get over that. Amen. Get over that. Can't nobody tell you what to do. You need to get over that. We're in the last day, okay? Praise the Lord. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, Matthew 24 and 42. Hey, I'm just showing you a few scriptures. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, I'm telling anybody, we, we're not trying to build a big old church. We're trying to reach as many people as we can, but we're not trying to build a big old church. Amen. Now, that don't make sense, do it? God going to fill 
places as he wants. But we're trying to reach people. Yeah. And if, if we speak the truth, God, God will, will multiply. We're trying to reach people. Amen. We're not trying to build a big old church, you know. And there's a difference because it's late in the day. Look at Matthew 24, 42. Check this out. Have you read this, lady? Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord doth come. Watch, watch, watch. Pay attention. Watch, watch. That's why I watch. I don't watch much local news, but it's okay if you do. But watch. Hook into some world news. Watch the world. God is watching the world. He's not just watching your little town. Watch. He said, for what? You don't know what hour your Lord does come. How many believe Jesus came one time? Come on. If you do, raise your hand. I'm not by myself. Did you believe? Do you really believe that he died on that cross? Amen. Well, if you believe that, you got to believe he's coming again. Amen. There's no way you can believe one without believing the other. Amen. And this Bible is written, this book is just full of signs that keep saying, you better believe it. <laughs> this ain't Ripley, believe it or not. This is, you better believe it. Watch, for you don't know what hour your Lord will come. But know this. Look at it. It says that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief come, when it says what watch, that means what time of day. A watch is different times of day. Uh, uh, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man come. So when you don't think he's coming, when you are in Coolsville, you in Chillsville, when you're in that season of I'm going to lay back, 